This video is going to talk about how to take data using the volumetric flasks, 25 milliliter volumetric flasks, and um, collecting data for um, solutions of 2-propanol and water. I've got my data from earlier today, and this is the mask of my clean, dry flask. I added 25 milliliters to it exactly, did the mass, did the, emptied it out, did it again, emptied it out, excuse me, did it again to have three trials uh, to at least get some statistics on it. The average of those three values was 51.49 uh, grams. Oh, right. And uh, then I had to subtract off the mass of the clean, dry flask to get the grams of water. Uh, here, um, I forgot to write this down, but my temperature, uh, I'll write that down here. Temperature equals 23.4 uh, degrees Celsius. And so when I turn my uh, grams, oh, I did forget to do something. Um, so uh, when I turn my grams of water into milliliters of water, I use this number here, which is the density of water at 23.4 degrees Celsius. And um, this is, so then I, I went and I made some mixtures. I took my beaker, which was not dry, and then I masked it, recorded its mass. Then I added my 2-propanol. Then I added my um, uh, water until I got to 25.00 milliliters. And that I should write is actually uh, 24.85, 24.856 milliliters, because that's the number of milliliters I got, not 25. I don't have to use that number later in my calculations. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm now, and I only did a few points. I want to test it out. Uh, and one of my points is bad, actually. Uh, this one. So I'm just going to delete it now. I've run through this data before and I saw that uh, it was way off. There we go. So I only have four points. And what I need to do is I need to find my grams of 2 prop. And my grams of 2 prop is going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to be uh, uh, once I added my 2 prop minus the beaker that was not dry, but whatever water was in there wasn't 2-propanol. So I've got my grams of 2-propanol. Now I need my grams of water. And my grams of water are actually going to be uh, a little trickier. It's going to be the 51.12 minus 28.73. And then it's also going to be the difference between, uh, so uh, plus, 26.69 minus the clean dry beaker because that's the water that was left in there anyway. So it's a little more complicated. And um, this number up here, the B4, that's not in my data down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put dollar signs in here. Dollar signs in Microsoft Excel tell the computer that. As I move down the rows, that because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, highlight both of these. I'm going to click and drag. And you can see that this one, for example, references the three cells here. But because I have these dollar signs in here, it's actually still referencing the clean dry flask. So that's a way of doing like keeping a reference to a cell even as you go down the different rows. Uh, yeah, so now my grams of 2-prop, my grams of water. I need moles of 2-prop and moles of water because I'm, I want to get my mole fraction. And there's a typo. So moles of 2-prop is going to be my grams of 2-prop divided by my molar mass, which is 60.10 grams per mole. My moles of water will be my grams of water divided by, I'm going to use 18.02 grams per mole. And then uh, again, I can highlight both of these and then 
over, well, I can do a couple things. I can click and drag this down, or which is what I did last time, but now I'm going to double click and it actually knows to go down to uh, the other columns that are next to it. Now I need my mole fraction, which I'll just call X, even though it's chi, X to probe, which is going to be my moles of two probe divided by my moles of two probe plus my moles of water. And double click to make that go down. When, uh, and I have to double click when it turns from that cursor, the white cursor, into that black cursor. And now I need my density because I want to plot. Uh, oh, no. What do I want to plot? Um, I am, uh, so we're plotting actually molar volume, not density. So molar volume is the, well, volume of a mole. Uh, yeah, actually, let's just do density for now. <laughs> um, I have to think about molar volume uh, for a minute. Um, density, hold on. So, molar volume. Yeah, I have to think about molar volume, um, but let's just do density for now. Density is going to be my grams of water, oops, we need parentheses there, grams of water, grams of 2-propanol plus grams of water divided by my um, milliliters. And I am going to actually do one of these references again. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put dollar signs in it. Dollar, dollar, and double click and I get my density values. Um, how am I gonna do molar volume now? So uh, I know how many moles I have. I know how much volume I have. Let's see, molar volume. Oh, it's the volume of one mole though. Well, I'm gonna have to save that for another time because uh, <laughs> I'll have to think about it again. Let's see. Oh, but I do want to do this. So I'm now going to graph these four. Oh, I'm going to graph six points. Um, I'm going to graph mole fraction of zero to propanol, which will be exactly the density of the water, which was, let's see, I put it in here, 0.997445. That's that number right here. So I'll copy and paste it. And then one, uh, I just happened to remember because I was working with it before, 0. 0.7808 is the density of pure 2-propanol. And I'm going to graph these six points. And this doesn't look like much, but what I want to do is I'm going to double click on the y-axis, change it to just zero and uh, 0.75. Oh, my maximum should be one. There we go. There is my data. And then on my x axis, I'm going to do zero and one. And that's where my data fits. Yep. Um, and now, uh, and that's what my data looks like. And you can see there's a little bit of a curve there. Oh, this is what I can do. Um, I'm going to copy these two points, get rid of that graph. And now I'm going to graph all three of these columns because I want a separate line for my line, my linear trend between the two of them. Now I'll go back and do this again. My axis options, I want 0.75 and 1 for the y-axis. And I want 0 to 1, my x-axis. And now for these orange points, 
I'm going to plot them on the primary axis, it's true. And I'm going to have a marker. I'm going to have no marker, none. And I'm going to have for my line, a solid line. And that is how you get uh, density as a function of mole fraction. I should label my axes, but we'll take care of that later. And I can see that the densities, which is also, oh, I don't know about molar volumes. The molar volume density is lower, so molar volume is going to go up. But that's how you make a nice spreadsheet, um, which can analyze your data. You can just put in basically this data here for all of your data that you collect in a day, and then go ahead and uh, copy and paste some functions, and it'll do the math you.